In the Isle of Man Steam Packet Company's 175th year, after 29 years in service, the Lady of Man is to be sold. I'm Alex Brindley, and join me in a last look around the Lady of Man, the departure of which for Manx Shores ends an era. Built in the Troon Yard of Ailsa Shipbuilding in 1975, she's the fourth vessel of a quartet of side-loading car ferries built for Manx service, using a spiral ramp design which, even today, remains unique to the steam packet. She arrived in Douglas on the 29th of June 1976, following a number of construction delays, and was instantly popular with passengers and crew alike. She was extensively rebuilt in 1989 to increase passenger comfort, with the old passenger steamer-style accommodation of wooden benches being replaced with modern, open-plan ferry-style lounges, and also to increase car carrying capacity. She was rebuilt once again in 2001 to upgrade passenger facilities further and to bring her in line with the new Safety of Life at Sea or SOLAS safety requirements. Manx Radio stepped on board the lady at the end of TT Week this year as she prepared to depart from Douglas for the very last time. Captain Peter Curran is Marine Operations Manager at the Steam Packet and sailed on the Lady of Man as her master through the mid-80s but he's also had a lot to do with her during his current job over the past 10 years. How are we okay? Good, good, coping well. Yes, we're on the bridge here now off the, uh, off the ship, which you can see is a uh, an open bridge uh, as opposed to an enclosed bridge that we have on Ben McCree and uh, Super Sea Cat 2 and, and quite in keeping with the uh, time at which the ship was built. Uh, we have the engine combinators here uh, which are on both sides of the ship uh, and used according to the side the ship is berthing or leaving from uh, and we just have the engine room controls and the uh, bow thrust unit. Uh, the, the, the main uh, engine controls are on the console in, in the wheelhouse uh, and then there are these slaves which are uh, on each bridge wing. Looking aft from the uh, bridge wing here we can see the, uh, uh, the funnel and the funnel actually on the Lady of Man is not a true funnel, it houses the emergency generator. The, the, the actual funnel is in the main mast. But looking after, we can see that uh, we've got uh, life rafts here uh, in the fore part, in the foreground, and then we've got the six uh, lifeboats uh, that she carries uh, in order to comply with the uh, regulations. We, of course, very much hope that we never have to use them in earnest, but they are lowered on a weekly basis for emergency drills and exercises and to test all the equipment. Um, it's certainly a lot more modern than, say, the, the ships off the Manxman class, for sure. But fundamentally, uh, the objectives are still the same. We have the steering wheel here in the central position, which is fairly fundamental and fairly common, although some of the ships today, modern ships today, uh, have just little tillers. So even the, uh, the, the wheel is now going out of uh, being, but still traditional in the Lady of Man. Uh, and again we have an emergency telegraph just to the side of that for the same reason as the docking telegraph in so much as that if there is a, a failure with any of the system then we can basically revert to basics. The telegraphs going back for many many years basically had dead slow, slow, half and full in the head and the stern modes. So they were, they were the, if you like, the, uh, the increments by which everybody knew or judged the speed. Right, okay, we have the uh, uh, stabilizers, which again, uh, the first ship in the steam pack to have stabilizers was the Manx made in 1962, so they've only been in being since the time of the car ferries. And they're basically uh, fins, for want of a different term, that come out from the uh, midships on the ship. They're about eight feet long, and they're gyroscopically controlled 
to dampen down the, the roll. Uh, very, very effective when the uh, wind and sea is on the side of the ship, not so effective when the wind is ahead or astern. Um, and the ship really needs to be doing somewhere in the order of about 12 knots for them really to be effective. But a very, very uh, good addition to um, ship's equipment and very, very valuable. Here we have uh, watertight doors. The, the Lady of Man actually has uh, 12 watertight compartments, most of which are permanent, but there are some bulkheads, walls, if you like, between compartments where people have to get through on a regular basis, particularly in the engine room. So we have uh, the water, what they call watertight doors. So uh, basically they keep the, uh, maintain the watertight integrity of the ship. And this ship was built to what they call a two compartment class. So if she was in a collision or, or, or grounding or uh, anything like that, she could still have damage to two compartments, but still be stable and, and, and safe. Right, well we're actually standing on the boat deck from the bridge deck we saw the, the, the lifeboat so as you can see they're slightly higher and elevated from the, the, the deck itself but uh, the name obviously is where we get boat deck from. A traditional deck on, 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 on many ships and certainly at the time that the Lady of Man was built and uh, as you can see it pro provides a nice open area where people can get a lot of fresh air and watch the world go by. Very very popular area as you might imagine. The casing that we're walking around basically houses uh, officer accommodation in the fore part and private cabins in the after part. Although that was the promenade deck, by, uh, uh, the boat deck by name, uh, the decks also have numbers these days and the boat deck was, uh, is deck six. This is now deck five, which is the main passenger uh, deck. As you can see, it has a cafeteria here, it has the information bureau, it has general seating and then it has the coffee shop. So this is the main passenger area internally on board the ship, although there are other compartments. So just moving at the forward end of, of, of the uh, deck five, or what when the ship was built was the promenade deck, although obviously it's been enclosed more, and, and that refurbishment took place in 1989. So we meet the stairs coming down from the uh, boat deck or deck six again, and now move down to uh, deck four. And as we move just around the corner here, we will move into uh, the first lounge, which again is a feature that's on all the ships, it's on the Ben McCree and the Super Sea Cat 2, an area where people pay an enhancement um, on a trip by trip or bookable uh, basis just to have that little bit more uh, privacy. Um, moving through here into the Blue Ribbon Lounge for which people pay uh, an annual premium a, a nice part of the ship. The music may give you an indication that we're actually approaching the, the bar again. Another uh, uh, Triscoll bar. And again, a very popular area uh, on the ship, uh, particularly at this time of the year with the bikers and the TT people. So, uh, nice atmosphere in here. Captain Jack Ronan is another former master of the Lady of Man, who has made over 400 trips in command. My first uh, sighter was when we used to go past Troon Yard on the way to Adras, and you could see the big white superstructure in the summer of that, when she came in 1976. You could see her at Troon, and she, she arrived late, as did the Mona's Queen, and most of the ship, they wanted them out for for TT, and uh, very few of them arrived for TT because shipbuilding being such, keeping up with with regulations and all, and Lloyd's and Board of Trade or Department of Trade, whatever they were them days, uh, they were insisting on more stringent measures, and of course put they put back weeks, so she arrived. Rather than beginning of June or late May, she arrived late June, I think it was, 
And uh, I seen her arrive. She came down into Douglas Bay, done a sweep of the bay and into the harbour, which I was fortunate enough to be on the pier that evening and took several pictures of her. And uh, it was my pleasant duty to command her within the year. I was the third master to have her. John Kenyuk was the first, he was the Commodore. Uh, and uh, Bernard Quirk followed, he was the Assistant Marine Superintendent. And uh, I came in a, a good third, shall we say, before the end of the year, 1976. And thereafter, I was in her every year, one time or another, until I retired in 1988. I can understand that that's the much nostalgia for her now because she's the end of the line. Uh, she was the last purpose-built ship for the company. I say that my tongue-in-cheek to Ben McCree's come since, but as the old original steam packet, she was the last ship to be built as such, and uh, and therefore, uh, yeah, yeah, holds much nostalgia and poignancy for the for us people of, the, who be called steamies. Uh, and uh, from a master's point of view, you know, I had to do a lot of the ship handling, all the ship handling. Uh, she was that much better, made life a lot easier. We had certain reservations about the two of them at first, being not being camel-led built, because we had great faith in those uh, camel that were built at Birkenhead. They, they'd built steam packet ships from time immemorial, so the Troon Yard arrived on the scene and... Uh, they, they, they were worthy successes and uh, yeah she she done all that was wanted of her and what still is I mean she gets the still weather there's still that and tides to come to uh, contend with and uh, yeah yeah well really she was the from that point of view she was the best of the lot yeah comparing uh, with those that have gone before her, she was quite a wonderful innovation. She followed the Bonus Queen, which was the first motor ship, and with all the modern appliances, control pitch propellers, direct control from the bridge to the propellers, bow thrust, which the Bonus Queen had, and of course the Lady of Man was one step better, being four years younger, and she was faster. She had great power in co compared to to her sister and uh, she was similar power to the to the steamers because they were all specified 2021 20, knots which basically she was the the, the Mortis queen was was built with uh, an underpowered engine engines she only I think she only he thought six cylinders would be enough uh, peel sticks, crassly peels again. He thought that six six cylinders would be sufficient, and it just she just wasn't able to achieve the twenty knots in comfort. So they built an extra set of cylinders on on the lady, which gave her seven sets per engine, and as they were peel stick V engines, which were designed originally for the U boats. She, because she had seven cylinders, you double them, she had 14 cylinders per engine, which gave her the extra three or four knots. And and I, I really, ship for ship, she was probably the fastest they ever had. Yeah, most of the trips I done were to Liverpool, Douglas, Liverpool, Liverpool, Douglas. And, uh, oh, she was a flyer. In 1994, many thought the lady had served her time and was about to bid farewell when she was laid up and replaced by the new Sea Cat Isle of Man, which ushered in the new era of fast crafts to the company. However, it was soon found that the fast crafts had limitations and couldn't handle some of the Irish Sea's more harsh weather conditions, and the lady returned for winter sailings to Liverpool, summer cruises to ports such as Whitehaven, Fleetwood and Clandidno, and, most importantly, as a major part of the fleet during the TT in June each year, alongside the Ben McCree and numerous Sea Cats and Super Sea Cats. Well, 
what you see here are what we call our motorcycle racks, hitching rails, and um, they're very simple device, which means that uh, as, as each motorbike comes aboard, it's put up against one of the rails, it's protected by cloth, and then it's secured with these rope lashings. So it's a very simple but effective means of making sure that the motorcycles are secure and safe. And they're, they're very portable, they just fit into the uh, lugs on the deck here. So when the TT is finished, the barriers can be removed and in an instant it's back to just a main car carrying vehicle deck. As we move just out from the uh, from the new area of, of the vehicle deck, we come on to the spiral ramp system, which was here since build. So, uh, and the spiral ramp system was designed in order to ensure that we could load and discharge vehicles uh, at any state of tide. The tidal range in Douglas is something in the order of seven and a half meters, uh, and in other places we go to is ten meters. So, we have to be able to be sure that we can actually. Uh, load and discharge the ship at any of those states of tide. The other uh, really ad 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 advantageous point of the lady is that whereas uh, most Roro ships have to have a fairly major installation like a link span, ships like the Lady of Man don't. Although we've got a car ramp there, as you can see, which is fitted into the into the side of the ship. Basically, you could you could almost operate, providing you've got a, a flat key wall. Uh, and the means of just putting the cars over, then you're virtually in business. So you don't have to wait for sort of berths to become vacant. So she has great flexibility in that regard. We just moved down now onto the uh, main vehicle deck, uh, which again is, is as built. The only difference now is that uh, you see here uh, the openings, which when the ship is at sea are watertight doors. Uh, which are closed um, and have been fitted since 2001 to meet the uh, most recent regulations on ship stability. And here, again, we can carry probably 60 or 70 motor vehicles. And then we can all, also use the ramp system to carry vehicles as well. So between here, the upper vehicle deck, and the ramp system, I'd say we can accommodate up to 125, 130 motor vehicles and or 500 motorcycles and combinations of, of, of both. She's a very, very good. Uh, uh, she's a very, very good uh, carrier, and, and uh, the equipment that we've got, the people that we've got, the crew that we've got to do it, are very well trained in it, and they become very, very used to it. So uh, hopefully, it's um, it's, it's a nice experience. For the, for the passengers themselves, because that's what we want, and we want them to come back year after year. She's got a lot of life left in her from, a, uh, well, from every point of view, but mechanically, uh, she's been very, 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 very well looked after. Uh, you may know we have our own uh, shore workforce here who look after uh, some of the maintenance uh, aspects. So over the years, she has always been very, very well maintained. Um, and although in, in the first years of service she was a winter ship, in recent years she has been laid up for some parts of the winter. So in terms of hours run, they are not that great. So, you know, mechanically she's very, very sound. We're just moving up part of the ramp system and um, it's about mid-tide at the moment. So we're using, again, um, these, these vehicle deck doors are numbered. 11 is the bottom one. 12, 13, 14, and 15. So we're at 13 at the moment, which is just mid-tide level, basically. And as the tide comes up or down, then so the ramp has to be shifted. But it's a very simple and effective method of offloading and discharging, and um, something which has stood the test of time very, very well. Again, we're walking up now between uh, 13 and 14 we call them hills because that's what they are basically and then move on up to the upper level which is uh, turn 15 and these would be the uh, the exit and entry points that we would use at low water when the ship is furthest down then these were the ones we we use 
fr from aft here you, again you're looking towards the boat deck um, and, and the scene here is motorbikes on the quay, the sun is shining, Douglas Bay looks absolutely fabulous so I think the, uh, the combination of the Lady of Man and the TT uh, Douglas Bay on such a lovely evening is uh, a sight to behold really. Over the years the people of the Isle of Man have become particularly fond of the Lady of Man. She's the last in the line and is still the fastest diesel conventional ship that the company have owned to date. But most of all she'll be remembered as the ship that could sail in any weather. January 1982 I think it was, it got a snort of that day. Uh, forecasts again were not spot on, they were giving me 4.7. By the time we were an hour out, it was 4.11. And she, the, the, that was the lady, a man, you know, she she, uh, she might have had worse sense, but, but I, that's the worst I think I ever had in an Isle of Man boat. And it was her, yeah. And uh, the wind was westerly, headed down for the North Wales coast for a bit of shelter, but. It seems to swing southwestly, southwest, so uh, it sw it swung round in, and it was right behind us again. But it pushed it along. We, and the amazing thing about it was, we lost no time. We were tied up at one o'clock, just the same. And uh, oh yeah, I was the, the, never afraid of her ever after, and I don't think anybody else has either. You know that she conducted herself so bravely that day. Uh, I think it's more relaxed these days. When when I was master, right up to the end, it was still the old steam pack, and you sailed whether or not, and uh, you had to be standing up an end before before you cancelled, and uh, the mail had to get through, as they used to say. Former master of the Lady of Man, Captain Jack Ronan. So, what is different about the Lady when compared to some of the faster craft in use by the steam packet today? Captain Alan Alberston was in command on her final departure from Douglas Harbour. If you're talking about a twin hull sea cat rather than the super sea cat which is sitting there, a twin hull sea cat doesn't have rudders. Uh, none of the sea cats, the fast ferries, they, they tend not to have rudders, they're steered by jets and the operation of them is completely different because you don't have a bow thrust on a twin hull on a catamaran. You have to use the jets and the vectors, the resultant vectors of the jets to cause the vessel to manoeuvre sideways, to turn, etc. Whereas with a conventional ship like this, we've got two propellers at the back end, we've got a bow thrust at the front. So we can operate each end of the ship individually or as, together as, as needs be. Whereas with the Sea Cat, you can only really do one motion at a time. The Super Sea Cat 2, she's more like a conventional ship in that she has, although she has steering jets rather than rudders, she does have a bow thrust, so she's very similar to a conventional ship. The, the length is um, 105 metres, length overall. She has a gross tonnage of around about 4,500 tonnes. She's got a capacity for about 130 cars and 800 passengers. Speed. Um, she was, her design speed was 21 knots. She can still achieve this. I mean, um, one day in the Mersey last winter, I actually achie achieved 24 knots with the tide, with the tide in, in our favour. But she consistently manages 20 knots. I've been out in, in, in many a gale in the Lady of Man and, and feel very comfortable with her, you know. I mean, you, you don't at all feel apprehensive. You know that the vessel's going to get you through. You know, the, probably the most memorable journey I ever had was two, so two um, seasons ago coming back from the Azores and we had quite a, a, a big northerly swell and an Atlantic gale and that actually took me four days to get back instead of three which we normally do it in so you can imagine there was, there was quite big seas so basically we just reduce the speed and, and ride it out but she's a very good sea boat and I've got confidence in her to take her anywhere basically. It's true that the vessel could take it, whether it's a wise thing to take people out into storms and gales like uh, used to happen in you know, the not too distant past, then uh, I would argue the fact that it, it's better to stay in port when the conditions are that bad. And yes, the more modern vessels, if you're talking about the fast ferries, they have a limitation put on them by the authorities which don't allow them to go to sea in more than uh, a limiting wave height. So for instance on Super Sea Cat it's three metres, so if the wave heights are predicted to be more than that, you legally can't sail anyway. 
Uh, common sense prevails, as I said. Um, you wouldn't want to take passengers out in, in a Force 10. It just wouldn't be a very pleasant experience for them. Anything that makes her individual, I, I would say the atmosphere. I've worked on the ship from being second mate through chief officer to master and I've always found for whatever reason, I don't think anybody can actually put their finger on it, but the atmosphere amongst the crew on board the ship, I th I, I've never experienced it anywhere else on any other ship and in any other company. So it's, it, it, it is atmosphere and as I say, I can't really put my finger on the reason why, it just is there. Captain Alan Alberston. So, the Lady of Man has finally been sold to Greek interests for use in the Aegean Sea. But it was an inevitable conclusion to the story of the Lady, as Isle of Man Steam Packet Company communications manager Jeff Corkish explains. Absolutely, as all our 70-odd ships that we've had in the past have also served the island well and moved on. And uh, that's the nature of the business, of any business, to be successful in a business. One has to reinvest and move with the times. That's what our people our passengers want, that's what our ship's crews expect, and that's what the company and the Isle of Man expects as well. Everybody's had to see a ship go. I can remember in my 35 years of the company various ships that have left, and uh, people have always been very sad. And they'd be sad, of course, when Sea Cats move on, they'd be sad when the Ben McCree moves on and we buy the next in the continuing story of the Isle of Man vessels. Yes, that's life. And as for the last word on the lady, well, we'll leave that to Captain Peter Corrin. After a wonderful career in the steam packet and uh, like her predecessor, the uh, previous Lady of Man, she's given excellent, wonderful service to the Isle of Man steam packet uh, and the Isle of Man in particular. And um, yes, yeah, she will, of course, be a, uh, a shame, but uh, things move forward and times move forward and uh, that moment has come and uh, we are thankful that we've had her. She's been a great ambassador for the Steam Packet and the Isle of Man, but we must move forward and uh, move on in with, with the current fleet. Mm -hmm.